What's up, Lions of Liberty fans? You can now support this show on Patreon and get exclusive access to bonus audio and video content, including Conspiracy Corner, Degenerate Gamblers, bonus segments with guests, and so much more. Head on over to patreon.com slash Lions of Liberty. Welcome to Felony Friday, a presentation of the Lions of Liberty podcast. Here is your host, John Odermatt. Felons, friends, and freedom lovers, welcome back to another edition of Felony Friday, a weekly show right here on the Lions of Liberty podcast. Of course, Felony Friday focuses each and every single week on exposing injustice in this nation's oh-so-broken criminal justice system. Felony Friday is not the only show on the Lions of Liberty Podcast Network. We have three other shows right now at the moment. We kick off every week with the show every Monday, hosted by Mark Clare. It is our longest-running program, our flagship program. And quite honestly, you know, don't tell Mark I said this, but I think Mark maybe has become the best interviewer in the Liberty Movement. Um, He's doing a fantastic job with his interviews. When you listen to a Mark Clare interview, as Tom Woods once said, you don't just hear a list of questions. You hear well-thought-out responses, challenging questions, not gotcha questions. I think he's doing a fantastic job with the show. Every Wednesday, we have Electric Liberty Land, hosted by Brian McWilliams. It is your weekly shot of culture, comedy, and liberty. Brian, also doing a great job with that show. Uh, You know, it's Brian McWilliams likes to say, you know, it wouldn't be a uh, Wednesday morning without a little bit of Brian McWilliams in your cup of coffee. So (laughs) enjoy that. And every Tuesday, we have the show sandwiched between those two shows. It's called Candidates of Liberty. It's our newest show, our newest segment, It's probably temporary, where we're interviewing libertarian candidates, learning about why they're passionate about liberty, why they want to run for office, how their campaigns are doing, how you can help. It's a fantastic show. We've had some great candidates on. Uh, Check out last week's show with Lucy Breton, fantastic candidate. And next week's show, we will have Tim Silfies on from my stomping grounds here in Pennsylvania. So be sure to uh, subscribe to get all of those shows. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or Stitcher or Overcast or YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Just subscribe because the Lions of Liberty are there. We're everywhere. We are everywhere. You know what? If you want to go to our webpage, our website, we do have a website. You can listen there, actually, if you're, I don't know, like a an old person who doesn't know how to listen on their phone. No offense. No offense, people. I understand that, that happens. So to find that, you can go to lionsliberty.com slash FF143 because this is the 143rd episode of Felony Friday. Normally, at this point in the show, I would say, I want to introduce my guest right now. Let's get right to it. And I do want to get to it because I have a fantastic guest. I talked a little bit about what I want to do with the show this week in the Lions of Liberty Forum. Of course, the Lions of Liberty Forum is our group on Facebook. A lot of the times I'll I'll bounce some ideas off them. We have great discussions in there. And I talked about this week's show, I want to bring on a memory expert. So I'm going to be bringing on Mark Pendergrast. And Mark has written books about memory. I'll, I'll get into that in a minute, but... The reason I wanted to bring on a memory expert is because so much of what's going on right now in the case, the uh, the Senate hearing for the Supreme Court nomination of Brett Kavanaugh, so much is focused amount around memory, focused around Brett Kavanaugh's memory, focused around Christine Blasey Ford's memory, focused around these other accusers' memories who are coming out of the woodwork. What is true? What is false? What is just insanity and shouldn't be taken seriously at all? The only way to sort through that is to really understand the different ways that really, well, there's really only one way you can get an accurate memory, and that's by remembering something. But what we're going to talk about today with Mark is something called repressed memory therapy, which a lot of therapists will use today, even though it's been debunked as being complete garbage and a farce. 
therapists will use it today and what they'll do, and Mark will go into detail, but essentially is build up these memories over time. They start in these therapy sessions by, you know, maybe there was a uh, some sort of trauma, an assault, a sexual assault, something like that. And they'll try to pull out the memories of their patient. And in doing this, they're not pulling out memories, they are planting memories. And they'll bring up circumstances, say, well, did this happen? Did it happen like this? Well, was this person doing this? Or what happened next? Did this happen next? Did did you run out the front door or the side door? And they create these memories as they talk through it about stuff that maybe at the at the root of it, something similar did happen to them, or maybe not, maybe nothing like that happened. And it's just Everything's completely fabricated. It's not real. We're going to talk through that because I think it's important. And before I introduce Mark, there's a couple of other things I want to hit on here because I think it's important and it's topical. So you've heard about lie detectors recently, right? Uh, during these Senate hearings, uh, leading up to the Senate hearings, they've said that Christine Blasey Ford took a lie detector test. Well, if you're a regular listener of Felony Friday, and you should be, if you're not, shame on you. But if you're not you would know that, if you are, you would know that lie detectors, lie detector tests are fraudulent. They can be falsified very easily. And especially when you know the questions going in, which I'm sure Christine Ford did. And I wouldn't be surprised if she got some coaching. To hear about how to fake a lie detector, how to pass a lie detector, how to fool a lie detector, go back, listen to last week's episode of Felony Friday. You can find it at lionsofliberty.com slash FF142 with my guest Doug Williams, a polygraph expert, goes into all the, the details of how a polygraph machine works. This old technology from the 1920s that we still use today. The only other technology from the 1920s that we use today is a freaking toaster, but that and the <laughs> that and a polygraph machine, which the polygraph machine is still used today by all of our intelligence agencies and police forces to make hiring decisions and decisions around security clearances. It's nuts. But anyway, I digress. The other thing I wanted to bring up was Juanita Broderick was in the news recently with these uh, accusations coming back of a sexual assault against Brett Kavanaugh. Of course, Juanita Br- Broderick, who, of course, previous guest on uh, Felony Friday, you can find Juanita Broderick's appearance on Felony Friday at linesofliberty.com slash FF123. I believe that was back in May of this year when Juanita came on the show. And of course, Juanita Broderick um, has actual witnesses, uh, people that she confided in at the time that, that she was raped by Bill Clinton. Somebody who came to the room right after it happened, saw her swollen lip, saw her shaken up, heard the account immediately afterwards. So real evidence. And when Juanita Broderick came forward, these same Democrats in the Senate hearing, they laughed at Juanita Broderick. They just pushed her away. And it is a ridiculous double standard. And it that really deserves to be brought up because it's an insane double standards that the Democrats laughed at Bill Clinton's victims, where there was a hell of a lot more evidence than there is for anything... Uh, any of the Brett Kavanaugh situations, accusations, which, uh, I mean, they're they're not even close. I mean, Bill Clinton was accused and paid off women who accused him of violent, violent, horrible rapes. And that's not to say, I mean, I don't know if Brett Kavanaugh is is innocent or guilty in, in what he did. I do know the charges are from 35 years ago and nothing was brought up until this time. But the fact of the matter is none of us know what happened. Um, we can't read minds. Um, there is no evidence. And that, that's another thing. When we, they talk about you know, the Democrats are so quick to say, well, let's investigate it. Let's do an FBI investigation. Let's do an investigation. Guess what? There's nothing to investigate. There, and, and the things that there are really to investigate, the people who that uh, Christine Blasey Ford claims who were there, the ones who she claims were there said either they were, they were not there, or that the the one uh, woman who's known Blasey Ford says she has no idea. She's never met Brett Kavanaugh in his in his entire life. So it's a it's a crazy time, you know. I, as a libertarian, I am very jaded and skeptical 
And you know, I'm sick of our bloated government. I'm sick of the privacy infringement, sick of the war, sick of the war on drugs. I'm sick of innocent people, nonviolent people being locked in cages. And just to see this past week, I mean, with just with this circus that's going on, it's just, it's insane. You know, if Brett Kavanaugh is a serial rapist, which I really don't think he is, just looking at the circumstances of, of what's laid out and how nothing ever came out even close to an accusation until this one point in time when it's the biggest moment in his life and it just so happens to align with something, a Supreme Court justice being appointed uh, who the Democrats seem to hate, of course. But anyway, I've gone on a crazy wild tangent and I guess the just the one last thing before I introduce Mark, we talked about repressed memory. I, I do want to also bring up uh, Brian McWilliams did talk about this on Electric Liberty Land on Wednesday. He talked a little bit about repressed memory, but he also talked about just outright lies that people will bring up. And, you know, there's no way to really know the difference. But I think it's important to to when you look at Blasey Ford's testimony. Um, and, I, and I watched your testimony. Uh, I watched uh, Kavanaugh's testimony. Not all of it because I have a job and a life and I do this show and have a family and it all takes time. But I, I tried to watch and listen to it as much as I could. And quite honestly, looking at both of them, I think they both believe what they're saying. Let me say that again. I think they both believe what they're saying. I don't think that... Blazy Ford is outright just a pathological liar, just making up making up things and not caring. And I don't think she's a sociopath or anything like that. This is just speculation. But if I had to guess, I would guess that she's really dealing. There's some repressed memories here. And I wanted to bring this up because what, what Brian brought up on Wednesday on Electric Liberty Land, talking about there are people out there who will just make up blatant accusations about you, about someone just trying to ruin their life. And Brian, you know, a a woman tried to do that to him or threatened to do that to him. And I don't think that's what's happening here. I honestly think that, and I don't know, once again, this is just my guess. So don't, don't, uh, don't get too angry with me here. But my guess is there was some repressed memory therapy that went on here. And these memories were uh, were formed. She very well may have been sexually assaulted. Um, I don't think it was Brett Kavanaugh because I think Brett Kavanaugh believes what he says. And people will say, "Well, maybe he was blacked out drunk. Maybe he was." I I, I just don't buy it. I I, I I just don't buy it. For him to go on the record saying he's never been blackout drunk before, and to make all these claims, obviously to refute all these allegations. If he were to be caught in that, not only would he not get the uh, Supreme Court, the seat on the Supreme Court, he could go to jail for perjury. So I don't think it's in his best interest to lie about that. He could just step away. So I think it's very important to remember that. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh, everything he's saying, and that's the same thing with Blasey Ford. So that's what's so interesting about this. I've talked for long enough. Let's dig in to memory with the conversation with Mark Pendergrass. I just want to say two quick things before I introduce him. Number one, this was recorded on Tuesday. So this is obviously prior to the Senate hearing and the testimony from Kavanaugh and Blasey Ford. And also, this was recorded on the phone. Now, the quality of the interview at the beginning, it's a little bit shaky. A couple words are cutting out here and there. Bear with it. It gets better. Trust me. It gets better. Just fight through that. I know you can do it. It gets better towards the end. The content is awesome. So stick with it with Mark Pendergrass. Mark Pendergrass, this is his second appearance on Felony Friday. You can go back and hear his last episode. It was episode 47. You can find that at lionsofliberty.com slash FF47. Mark has written books on a wide range of topics all over the place, but today we're talking about memory. The three books that you want to check out from Mark that are all focused on memory. The first one is uh, Memory Warp, How the Myth of Repressed Memory Arose and Refuses to Die, Victims of Memory, Sex Abuse Accusation and Shattered Lives, and The Most Hated Man in America, 
Jerry Sandusky, and The Rush to Judgment. Mark, welcome to Felony Friday. Hi, thanks for having me. Actually, the most relevant book to what we're going to talk about is Memory Warp, How Repressed Memories Arose and Refused to Die, How the Theory of Repressed Memories Arose and Refused to Die. Okay, well, I'll link to all of those books on the show notes page, and I'll put Memory Warp first as being the most relevant. And as I said in the intro there, for our listeners that that didn't hear last time that you were on the show, we did... Uh, we were talking about the Jerry Sandusky case, which, as I noted, you, you wrote a, uh, a great book about, uh, really, your your insight into that case. Um, I don't want to spend time talking about that today. I think we have enough to talk about. But the reason I wanted to bring Mark on is because Mark has this outstanding background, this expertise in the field of memory, and most uh, specifically, talking about false memories that are the result of this debunked theory uh, called repressed memory theory. And we can get into talking about all of that. But really, I wanted to bring Mark on to talk about the possibility that what Mrs. Ford is remembering didn't really happen. And that might sound confusing to say, but we're going to get into the details of it. So, Mark, I, I think a good place to start would be really talking about what repressed memory is is where this therapy came from um who 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 started this and uh i guess starting there is a a good place sure um sigmund freud came up with this theory in 1895 that if you were sexually abused as a child then you frequently would completely forget it because it would be so traumatic that you had to step down to your subconscious where it would cause you problems, you would have bad uh, life experiences because of that, and you wouldn't know why. So the only way you would get better would be to remember this as an adult and express all the emotion from it, and then you would get better. And it's a very appealing theory. Freud himself took it back about three years later. Uh, It's very clear from reading his work that he did not get these memories to come back spontaneously, but that he pressured his clients into having them, which was often the case when it experienced sort of a resurgence in the late 1980s and in the 1990s. There was a book called The Courage to Heal, which became sort of the Bible of the repressed memory movement. So just to cut to the chase, it's been pretty well debunked by good uh, memory scientists, although I think most people's in the general public, and many uh, clinical psychologists still believe in in this theory. So you could argue that endlessly as well. I concluded in my book that it's very unlikely that people repress memories, that instead we tend to remember the bad things that happen to us better than other memories, Uh, although all memory is subject to distortion and change, particularly the further back it is and the more your current life experiences might uh, influence you, uh, you can actually change your memory even of of bad things. So people can clearly come up with false accusations of really horrific events, and that's been shown in in many uh, psychological experiments, and it's very obvious that that happened in, in a large way during the 80s and 90s, and that this kind of uh, therapy continues to this day. But you, you you don't actually need therapy to change your memory. We, we all do this. And if somebody told you, uh, for instance, the most famous uh, example of this was telling people that they had been lost in a shopping mall and were severely traumatized when they were children. And many people would rehearse this and then come to remember it in in glowing detail, even though it had never happened. And I covered all kinds of cases of people who remembered being in satanic ritual abuse cults and other really awful things where they ate babies and witnessed murder and were horribly, horribly abused, none of which was true. Um, so when I first heard these allegations uh, about Kavanaugh, and they were 
uh, from over three decades ago. I, you know, immediately thought, well, I wonder if this has anything to do with repressed memories. I wonder if she always remembered this or not. The first thing I always ask people is, is this something that you always recalled? Now, just because you always recalled it doesn't mean you, you would talk about it. A lot of people don't talk about it. It's embarrassing. Uh, it's painful. And many people never reveal it, but it's not that they uh, forgot it. So that's my big question here. I don't know if uh, Ms. Ford is going to tell us uh, whether that's the case or not, but you know, the fact that she first talked about these allegations in couples therapy with her husband, it raised a little bit of alarm, although couples therapy is not normally where you remember this stuff. It's usually an individual therapy. But then she was in individual therapy the next year, and it's not clear to me whether she named Kavanaugh in the first place or whether she was searching to try to remember who it was. And if if that is the case, if she was searching to try to remember who it was, that's, a, that's an indication that possibly it was repressed memories because often people would uh, think, oh, somebody did something to me but I can't place a face to it and then under the influence of guided imagery or dreams or something like that, they would they would come to envision it. So that's a, you know, but but her husband says that she did name Kavanaugh in 2012 during the therapy. Um, he may be misremembering or he may be misrepresenting because he, of course, would want to, you know, say that that this was true. Now, on the other hand. What disturbed me about this was Mark Judge, his friend, who was supposed to have jumped on and uh, to sort of add to the pile of, of attempted uh, molesters. Uh, he says he didn't do it. Kavanaugh says he didn't do it. He, they, he sounds very convincing, Kavanaugh does. But Mark Judge wrote a book called Wasted, which was a thinly veiled autobiographical account of the immense amount that he drank at Georgetown uh, Prep School. And there's a character in the book whom he called Bart O. Kavanaugh, which is very <laughs> clearly Brad Kavanaugh. And he talks in there about this character, uh, Bart O. Kavanaugh, uh, having uh, puked uh, and passed out on the way back from a party. Those are quotes from his uh, book, from Wasted. So that would seem to indicate that they did drink a lot. Now, cut to the next allegation that came up, which is from uh, his Yale years. And uh, Deborah Ramirez has now come forward to say, that they were engaged in a drinking game and that uh, Kavanaugh stuck his penis in her face, forced her to touch it during a drinking party. And again, I was somewhat skeptical of this because in the New Yorker article about it, it said, quote, after six days of carefully assessing her memories and consulting her attorney, Ramirez said that she felt confident enough of her recollections to say that she remembers this abuse. Well, that's highly suspicious if she's, you know, pondering on it for six days of, quote, assessing her memories. And yeah, that's, that's not how it, memory works, right? You can't get a clearer memory just by, especially looking, talking about 30 years ago, just by thinking about it more. It's, no, I mean, you, either, it's, you either remember it or you don't. It, it doesn't accrue. I mean... It's true that you can, you know, something can remind you of something and it can come back to you and you can say, oh, my God, I don't believe I forgot that. That does happen. Um, but this idea that you work on fragments of it that just you can build by visualizing them is not generally true. So I was skeptical of that. But then, you know, his roommate from Yale has now come forward. That happened today. I mean, this is a changing story every single day, so I hesitate to make pronouncements on it. But his name is James Roach, 
And what he said was that Kavanaugh was a very heavy drinker who became belligerent and aggressive when he was really drunk, and that he believes Ramirez, whom he knew. Now, Ramirez didn't tell him anything about these allegations at the time. He just said that he believes her. So that's sort of neither here nor there. But the fact that Kavanaugh clearly did drink to excess during his teenage and college years, it seems pretty obvious that that's the case. And Kavanaugh is denying that. And so I think he's lying. I think Brett Kavanaugh is lying about his drinking. Now, whether he's lying about the sexual abuse or not, I don't know. Or it is possible that he did these things and that he drank so heavily that he had a blackout and doesn't recall what he did, so that he is sincerely denying it. So I don't think this is a clear-cut case by any means Mm -hmm. of uh, that this is all repressed memory. But the fact that it might be repressed memory should come up in this hearing. I, and I tried to alert uh, both uh, Chuck Grassley and uh, Pat Leahy on opposite sides of, of the committee that they should ask these uh, w- women when they testify, you know, did you always remember this? Uh, who did you tell about it? And uh, as far as I am aware... People say, oh, I heard rumors about this, but that, you know, that could be them revising their memory as well. Um, And maybe they heard rumors, but it didn't name Kavanaugh, and now they're remembering Kavanaugh. You just have to be very careful with old memories. That's why we have statutes of limitations, um, because without fairly good corroboration, you know, old memories are iffy. Although, as I said, the worst things that happen to us tend to be the things we remember the best. It does strike me as odd that um, Blasey uh, Ford doesn't remember where the party was or much else about it. Although, as people have pointed out, You know, it's possible that she remembers this terrible thing that happened to her quite clearly, but doesn't remember the surrounding details so clearly. So, you know, it it really could go either way. And I am, the more I've heard about this, the more disturbed I am about uh, Brett Kavanaugh uh, as, as, as not being truthful about his drinking at the least. Well, I mean, could it be possible that you talked about his his friend or his roommate at the time who wrote that book? I mean, he's writing a book. He's trying to sell copies. Could 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 his memories be enhanced? It's possible, but why write an entire book called Wasted about the excessive drinking that you did as a teenager? I mean, I, I'm just wondering you why know, you would do that anyway. I don't understand. Things, <laughs> What's the <laughs> things that you? I haven't read the book. I've got to say, it would be interesting to go back and read the book. But, you know, you know, what I've said repeatedly is if you were, if something happened to you as a child for years at a time, you're not going to forget that you were sexually abused. If you drank for years at a time, you're not going to forget that you drank to excess. Um, that's not going to happen. And the fact that he named Kavanaugh in a very thinly disguised uh, fashion and said that he puked and uh passed out on the way home from a party uh, is, you know, fairly indicative, I think, that that probably happened. Um, And the fact then that his uh, roommate from college pretty much said the same thing, that he would drink very heavily and would become belligerent and aggressive. You know, I, I don't know why he would make that up. He was his roommate. I mean, do you remember... (laughs) <laughs> I'll tell you, I was in college uh, more than 35 years ago. I was in college uh, about 50 years ago. And I had a roommate named Peter who uh, was kind of a, a sweet nerd. He wasn't my roommate, but he lived in the dormitory. <clears throat> and we gave Peter some catnip to smoke and told him that it was marijuana. and he smoked it 
and got really, really high. You know, which he wasn't really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was it was funny. It was a joke we pulled on him, and and then we told him later what we'd done. Well, I remember that very well. I remember a lot of other things that happened uh, very well with my uh, roommates and the sayings that they had, and one of them, you know, really liked the W. C. Fields. Um, one of them uh, really uh, drank a fair amount, et cetera. So, you know, I don't think it's unusual to remember uh, things from a long time ago. Um, and maybe I'm wrong about some of it, too, though. So who knows? We're all pretty sure that our memories are correct. Yours are wrong, but mine are right. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I think, I mean... It's interesting that Brett Kavanaugh has been in a pretty high-level position. He was appointed by George W. Bush several years ago. Um, none of this came up then. Um, I guess this letter had been written um, to uh, to Miss Miss Ford's uh, California Senator Diane Feinstein back in midsummer or, or something like that, and she kind of held on to it for a while without doing anything with it. So it was it was really uh Senator Feinstein that didn't bring it up earlier. People say, well why didn't it, it was it was Senator Feinstein that, that outed Mrs. Ford as the as really the victim here. Um or at least the the um the one bringing these these accusations to light. That's right. But it's 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 interesting that this this uh didn't come out until until right now. Um, it's a little bit, and, and I think it's worth pointing out, you know, you're skeptical of, of this here. Uh, it, you're a liberal Democrat, right? I'm, I'm a libertarian. I don't have a vested interest in, in Kavanaugh getting, uh, well, let me just say, I probably shouldn't have said I was a Democrat. I'm, I'm, I'm liberal in terms of my politics. I'm not all that happy with Democrats anyway, but I'm a liberal. Yep. Yeah, well, nobody's happy with either party. If, well, maybe, maybe maybe some people are, but I would say the majority of people aren't. Right. That's so, true. well, I'm not. <laughs> let, 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 let me ask you this. Um, this is very subjective, but if, uh, and I guess that this is a big if, we don't know if this happened or not, but if Mrs. Ford going to see her psychiatrist was being subjected to or being put through this uh, repressed memory therapy, um, how how prevalent would you guess that this type of therapy is throughout the United States? Do you think this is fairly common? Is this something that's pretty rare where uh, where this is being done? Or what's your gut feeling on that? Well, uh, actually, I did a, a survey last year that indicated that about 5% of the people who took it, and it was over 2,000 people, or of all different ages, um, adults from 20 up, about 5% went to therapy and came to believe that they had recalled some kind of child abuse that they had never remembered before. And that was even higher of the people who went to therapy. That was Only about 50% went to therapy, so it was really more like 10% of the people who went to therapy. So a sizable number, not a majority, but a sizable number uh, of people do get influenced still and come to believe in, in, in this stuff. So it does happen. And, and ju- just to be clear here, um, the, p- the people that this happens to um, who are going getting this therapy, you know, they could be completely mentally fit people, right? And oh, well, yeah. this could happen to almost anybody. It could happen to anybody unless you were warned about it ahead of time. You, uh, unless you were warned that this is highly unlikely to be true, that you're l- much more likely to recall uh, bad things and always recall them, whether you talk about them or not, than to, to forget them, particularly if they happened over a period of time. Yeah, so I think it's quite important. I hope people will read Memory Warp uh, and... I hope they'll read the article that I'm going to send you a slightly revised version that you can post uh, on your website, if you would. Yeah, I'll I'll be posting uh, Mark's article on the website same day as this podcast goes live. I'll also link to it on the show notes page on on the website. But 
Yeah, definitely encourage everyone to read that, to read Memory Memory Warp. And where can people find the, the rest of your work on, on memory? Oh, they're all on Amazon. That's the easiest okay. place to get them. But, uh, you know, you, you can you go have a to website any, book, too, right? any bookstore and order them. Yeah, my website is my name, markpendergrass.com. And people can write to me from that also, actually. All right. Well, good deal. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Mark. I know this is sort of a, a touchy subject to talk about, so I appreciate you uh, you coming on and, and sharing your uh, expertise in the field of memory. Well, you're welcome. And, uh, you know, as I say, I really uh, I, I have a strong opinion that Brett Kavanaugh should not be confirmed, but I don't know whether the sex abuse allegations are true or not. Well, I think that is a fair opinion. Uh, Thank you so much for coming on, Mark. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. The cannabis industry has rapidly expanded. For those liberty lovers who want to take advantage of this growing industry, they've been met with a flood of government taxes and regulation. A lot of cannabis companies would just love to hire a full-time CFO, but that could be super, super expensive. But what if you could have the knowledge and experience of this full-time CFO at a fraction of the cost? If you're in the cannabis business or you plan on entering the fray, then you need to schedule a free consultation with the Grow CFO. CFO, Rachel Kennerly. The Grow CFO will help to maximize cost of goods sold deductions by employing accrual and cost accounting, creating tax savings, and improving cash flow. They will keep your books in an audit ready state. If you or someone you know is either already in the cannabis industry or thinking about jumping in the fray, go to thegrowcfo.com and schedule a free consultation today. Thank you guys for checking out, for listening to this episode of Felony Friday. I really do appreciate it. I'm not going to add a lot. I did add most of my thoughts at the top. Um, The one thing I will say is uh, things are not always as they seem. I think people want to simplify things and make them simple. I think when you look at a case like this, it can be nuanced. As I said at the outset, Both of the individuals here who testified before the Senate can believe what they're saying, and still one of them can be wrong. So think about that. Think about uh, what Mark said in his interview. Check out his books. He's a great guest, great guy. Um, Just want to let everyone know out there, just want to thank you all so much for supporting our shows here on Lions of Liberty. We really do appreciate it. Our Patreon group is just growing like crazy. Do have a special offer, guys. Have a special offer I wanted to talk about today. So, in the middle of the month for our five year anniversary, we had an offer that if you joined the Lions of Liberty Pride at any level, you'd get a free five year anniversary t shirt in addition to all the uh, in addition to all the other perks you get for joining the Lions of Liberty Pride. We're bringing that back for September twenty eighth, twenty ninth, and thirtieth. The last three days of this month, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you join the Lions of Liberty Pride, you get a free five-year anniversary t-shirt. Or if you upgrade during that time, bam, free five-year anniversary t-shirt in addition to the other stuff you get for that upgrade. So that's awesome. I mean, you can't beat that. You can't beat that. The Lions of Liberty Pride is amazing. Um, In addition to the, the free stuff, all the merchandise, you get access to all of our burn bonus material, which is great. I know right now as I speak, uh, record this. Uh, this is Thursday night, and this is obviously airing on a Friday. But tonight, Thursday night, Mark and Brian and Rico are recording a new episode of Conspiracy Corner. That is one of the uh, favorites of the Pride. They love that. I forget what the topic is, uh, but I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. And then every week in the Pride, we have our little show called Degenerate Gamblers. And that's myself and Brian McWilliams and Rico. And for the most part, we uh, just talk shit and bullshit and have fun and talk about stuff that's going on in the world and tell stories about college and make fun of each other. And we also talk about gambling just a little bit. But not real gambling, gambling with fake money, of course, because it's fun. It's fun to talk about, you know, yeah. You know, Liberty is is serious business. It's a serious business, but you got to be able to have some outlets, some ways to just to let it go and have a good time. So if you want to hear three libertarians just have a good time 
and talk about sports, talk about gambling. Join the Pride for five bucks a month, and you'll get every single week. You get at least at least a half hour we do every week, sometimes more than an hour of Degenerate Gamblers. It's a great show. I love recording it. So that's it, guys. That's all I have. Thank you all so much for listening. This is John Odermatt signing off. Always remember to keep your head up and the fires of liberty burning. <laughs>